the sound of the fens at Ely in East Anglia. And the ancient music in praise of God, which has echoed through the great cathedral for more than 800 years. Plain song, it's called, and was chanted by the monks who first came here over 13 centuries ago. It's still sung by the cathedral choir today. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord strong and mighty, even the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lift up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come. You come into the cathedral and you walk into a, an atmosphere of faith. The cathedral has got a great faith. And it was built by people who also got a great faith. You come through the west door and there it is in all its splendor, especially on a sunny morning. And you think, how beautiful. And uh, gives me a wonderful feeling, even if you wake up feeling a bit down, you come into the cathedral and uh, you're alive again. Across the flat of the Fens, Ely Cathedral looks like an exotic liner riding out a storm on a sullen sea. The peak of its great octagon stands up like a beacon on the bridge and is a soaring symbol of the cathedral's purpose the worship and praise of Almighty God. Through the centuries, Ely Cathedral has been cared for and nurtured by local men and women who've dedicated their lives to building it in the first place and then to looking after what others have left behind them. One such is today's head verger, Derek Butler, who lives in the Sacrist Gate in the Close and even has a gargoyle of himself high on the north wall. Thus he's immortalised for future generations. I was a gas man, and uh, I was quite happy working for the gas board, but I'd reached that, what I suppose one would call a dangerous age. I was restless. And so I saw this, this particular job was advertised in the church times and uh, Pamela was, my wife, was 100% behind me. And uh, we, we applied for it and got it and um, it's been a, a most marvellous experience. Every weekday morning at 20 to 8 we have matins and at 8 o'clock we have a communion service. And each weekday morning the procedure is that we have those two services in a different chapel. And so, so what you find is that for from Monday to Saturday, if you have your matins and communion in a different chapel each morning, you will find in the course of the week you have in fact gone round the whole building for worship. I'm the grand old man of the cathedral. And they, I've been through, I think that's the right expression, I've been through uh, one, two, three, about four, four deans, and, 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 and I'm on my third bishop. And um, I don't think I shall see any more. Hopefully. Each week, Derek climbs the steep staircase in the West Tower. One of the reasons why I like the clock tower is because it is the, one of the few places that I can go to and I know jolly well no one's going to bother me because very few people are going to climb up after me. But I go up twice a week to wind it. Um, it will go seven or eight days with, from, from winding to winding, but if you go up every seven or eight days, you've got a tremendous amount of winding to do. And if you go up twice a week, you haven't got so much wine yet, but you've got more climbing. So, you, it's a, as I say, it's a case of swings and roundabouts. Either you climb or you wind. It's quite a lo lovely old piece of mechanism, really. Date is 1812, uh, which is the year that Napoleon went to Moscow, which I always think about when I'm sitting up there looking at 1812, about the overture as well.
There are 32 cathedral cleaners at Ely, affectionately known as Martha's. Ina Osmond lives on the Kings Lynn Road, is a young 85, and has been helping in the cathedral for more than 50 years. Each one of the team has a special spot to keep clean and tidy, and the work is done with duty and devotion. We are a real community, and if anybody is in trouble, there's always somebody on hand who's quick to help and so on. It's, it's really very nice indeed. It feels very much like a family. I came to Ely Cathedral first in 1935 and came in the Great West Door, which was wide open in the sunshine. And it looked so beautiful that I can understand how everybody gasps when they come in on the same sort of day. And um, it made a great impression on me and I've loved it ever since. The cathedral is always peopled, even when it's at its most empty, because it's been there so many generations. I always feel there are people around from the past and the monks and all the rest of it. I love the building and the stonework and everything else and the fact that it's had services for so many years and it's become a holy place. Sometimes, especially in the early morning, it's lovely to just sit in the cathedral and just let it absorb you. And you often see people in the cathedral who do the same sort of thing. And I think it helps greatly. It was in 673 AD that Queen Etheldreda founded her monastery on what was then the remote Isle of Ely surrounded and protected by the flooded Fenland. Alas, it was not sufficiently isolated to protect it from the Danes, who attacked it from the sea in 870 AD, sacked the buildings, massacred monks and nuns, and left the place a ruin. When the building was restored, King Canute often visited the island by boat, on hearing the monks singing, he ordered his oarsmen to row closer so he could listen more easily. Ely, the Isle of Eels, still lives up to its ancient name today, as Sid Mary nets a handsome catch in the great ooze below the city. There's been a school at Ely since 970 AD. Edward the Confessor is said to have been educated here in the cloister school with the choir boys. Today, 13-year-old George Bartle is head chorister of the Ely Cathedral Choir. My singing is my way of communicating with God. And on a, a cold evening, even when there's no one there, I feel that God's always there listening. And even if, even if it's a rubbish even song, he, he doesn't mind. George and his friends belong to what is now called the King's School, and they're billeted at the choir house. On a February afternoon, one of their pleasures is to go out for muddy winter walks on the surrounding Fenland. Half of the beauty of the Fens is that it's flat, so you can see for long distances, with nothing in the way. And you can also see the cathedral very clearly from miles around. It's a big landmark in the Fens. I've always wanted to sing because I'm embarrassing 
We've got tapes of when I was two and three. I was barely able to talk when I was always singing. It makes you feel very glad that you can give people so much joy by doing something you love so much. I've got until July, until I leave. But I'm, I'm going to find it very sad. And I'll always go to the cathedral for the services. But uh, an ambition I've got is I'd like to uh, become organist there or choir master. When Derek Butler rings the bell for Evensong, he's carrying on a 900-year-old tradition. To call his friends to order, George Bartle sometimes has to reach back even further and uses the name of the cathedral founder, Ethelreda. If you're singing a big solo, you need to start knocking and you start sort of shivering. But it's a fantastic building to sing in when you're singing a loud piece like, say, Dr. Priest or something like that. It's great to sing in. At the end of the service, after the anthem, we always have the prayers, and you feel you don't want to kneel down for the prayers. You want to stand up and carry on. So it's a great feeling, though. You feel very proud singing in a cathedral. Before Charlie Feast came to work as groundsman and jack-of-all-trades at Ely Cathedral, he'd hardly ever been in the building, though he'd lived in Ely all his life. The only time it was of use to him was when he looked up at the clock to see what the time was. <coughs> now he's the life and soul of the workforce, and with his quick wit and strong back, he keeps the place clean and tidy. You want a drink, Stephen? I do my best to be a Christian. I try to lead a Christian way of life, but I find it very difficult. It's very, very hard work to be a Christian. You, you know, I go out my way to help people if I possibly can. 
I um I I don't like to use the word no. If I can help somebody, I will. As simple as that. Well, I've just, just been in finish the garden off, so we we go out and clean the roof down at the top. It's a bit messy up there. That's right. We're that's gonna, up, don't we? we go up on the roof to to clean the um, pigeons' mess and um, and block any 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 blockages what are up there in the drain pipes or in the in the gutters or anything like that. Pigeon's muck is ammonia, and ammonia is a form of acid. So that, that can get eaten into the stonework, you see, in the joints of the stonework even more than the stonework itself. And not only that, it splashes up the windows and makes all the windows filthy with pigeon's muck. And that's stopping light from going into the cathedral, you see, Swiss to the east end. I work with Bob Pearson. He's got a very good attitude on life. He's got a lot of good attitude about work. We have a good working relationship. We do um, odd jobs together. We cut hedges together. Sometimes we do gardening together. You know, and we we get on um, we get on very well together. There's a very peaceful atmosphere here. When I'm working outside in the summertime, all I can hear is the birds whistling in the gardens. It's wonderful. And you need peace and quiet to have peace of mind. Because you can, as you're working, you, you, can, you, you can hear yourself think. Charlie's favourite place in the cathedral is at the top of the octagon, which he has to reach through doors which might have baffled Alice in Wonderland. They must have been very small people when they built the old room, because I'm not a small man, and I have a job getting in and out of them. All this uh, English oak was built here by um, 15 carpenters and apprentices between 1322 and 1340. Um, it took them roughly 20 years to do it, and the eight uprights that go around the Octon Landon, they're 64 foot in length and they're two foot square and they weigh 10 ton a piece. And um, with the lead and all the, all the oak was in here is 400 ton of weight in this Ogden Lantern. It's amazing how they built it. I would really like to know how they built it. To my mind, it's, one, it's the eighth wonder of the world. Ruth Craig is seven years old and a regular at the Ely Cathedral Sunday School, which meets in Prior Crawdon's medieval chapel. We've been learning about Jesus. Ruth's mother, Helen, has four other children, all of them involved in the Sunday School. On weekdays, Helen teaches and Ruth learns at the local junior school. How is Jesus going to come into this city? Is he going to come on an aeroplane? No! In a Rolls Royce? No! On an elephant covered in jewels? No! How is he going to come? On a donkey. On a donkey. That's right. He's going to... He starts going to Sunday school at two or three. I like it a lot because of the songs and the way that one... And we can do drawings and stuff and the parties we have. I think it's a good thing to go to Sunday school because you don't have to stand around thinking is God and Jesus really fake or are they real? What are we going to say to Jesus? Hooray! 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 Jesus, the King is here! Okay, Hooray! we've all got this far, haven't we? Now we've got to take this long piece and push it through the middle. Okay? Just thread it through until it comes right down until you've got a, a loop at the top which isn't quite as big as two at the side. And then this other piece, you have to bend back up and put it... Where's it going? Through. 
Now you've got your cross. Okay, then push it through. Mum, I think I've broken it. Well, I think you'd better try and start again. Is um. that right? That's fine. When the Sunday school classes are over, the children are encouraged to walk across the close to the cathedral itself, where they can enjoy the singing. The students of the King's School give Ely the feel of a university city with their gowns, scarves and chatter. Twice a week, they use the cathedral as a chapel for school assembly. On special occasions, and accompanied by the school band, in which George Bartle plays the euphonium and his father the trombone, they sing hearty hymns in the Lady Chapel, which is reputed to have an echo lasting six seconds. Hardly an ideal recipe for tight harmonies. The village of Haddenham is 20 minutes away from Ely, and it's here that Peter Handley produces tens of thousands of flowers on some of the best growing soil in the kingdom. Regular visitors to the nursery are June Nash and Sylvia Green, who are among those who help to provide floral arrangements for the cathedral all the year round. We need yellow and white. This so you want five white more? as well, do you? Yes, please. Okay. White ones as well. <laughs> These are lovely, June, aren't they? Very nice. Just nice size. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love going out to Haddenham because it, you, you can choose just what you want then. Yeah. You don't have to um, yes, we want yellow and white. have what they yellow give you, as we say. So do you want the white palaver there? They've got nicer stems. Would you like that one? Yes, please. We like them the same colours, yellow. Yeah. I've always yeah. loved yeah. flowers. Yeah. And to get in a field of delphinium or something with secateurs is wonderful out of this world. Great delphinium, six and seven foot high. We do them for Ethel Reader's Day here in June, uh, which is generally blue and white, signifies Ethel Reader, our foundress. I've always loved the cathedral right from a very little girl. My earliest memory is about probably five years old, coming into the cathedral with my mother, who had no uh, 
hat in those days. It was wartime and had to walk through the cathedral with handkerchiefs as they were not allowed in the cathedral without a hat on. Shall I come to the other side, do you think? We'll see if we can... You yeah. need lots of stamina for flower arranging. Everything's heavy, everything's cold, everything's wet, but it's very rewarding. You walk back down the nave and, um, gosh, that's lovely, you know. And doing a wedding in here is as out of this world because it's, it's a sense of achievement and just feeling good inside. You've got wet hands, have you? Let's just give them a rub, shall we? Does it feel cold? Does it? Is it all cold and... That one, that one's cold and it's transformed. Is it? That's because I've had that one in the water, isn't it? This wonderful, warm feeling. Um, it helps enormously. I think it would help anyone um, to come into the cathedrals more and to look around and just feel this wonderful, peaceful feeling that um, God is always with us. Money for June's flower arrangements is often raised by coffee mornings and sales given by the Vice Dean and his wife in their medieval house, which has the romantic name of the Black Hostelry. We're allowed so much from the cathedral and the rest we, we raise through a coffee morning or a dress show or bring and buy and uh, all things to make money. I wouldn't like to think of life without the cathedral and its wonderful people. One happy family. There is a sense of mystery about Ely Cathedral, which reflects the mystery and magic of the Fens themselves. So isolated they are, so lonely, and so full of the atmosphere of antiquity. In Heroward the Wake, Charles Kingsley wrote, They have a beauty of their own, those great Fens, a beauty of the sea, of boundless expanse and freedom, that vastness still gives such cloudlands, such sunrises, such sunsets as can be seen nowhere else within these isles. And nothing like Ely Cathedral exists anywhere else either. Its magic is its own secret, carefully guarded and shared most closely perhaps by thousands of willing workers and volunteers who over the centuries have made it part of their spiritual lives and a unique part of the religious life of this country. <laughs>